fuck. Oh, fuck. The engine. We don't know yet if there's a hole about this big and there's just oil blurting out. We're fucked. Now the engine blew. And we're stuck in Nebraska. I mean, drive is the most important thing in life. You know, how badly do you want something? Boom, like a gunshot went off and started smoking in the back. I thought I blew a tire. Yeah, we got stranded, it blew ahead, man. It punched out one of the rods, oil spitting out. We were on the side of the road for hours. Oh, it was horrible. I can't even, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> party's over. It was fun though, but the party's over. Guy's gonna pick our fate. Look at him, he's like, oh fuck this. What's up, man? This guy yeah. hates his life. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to see your dreams come true? And you know, being in a band trying to follow a dream of being a, a musician is fucking hard, man. You gotta sleep on couches, you gotta drive six hours a day, you, you gotta play 250 shows a year. You gotta make your money like blue collar worker. Down and dirty, get in the audience, play in every you know, dirty bar that you could find. Driving and driving and driving. It's like if you can't deal with that, you know, is all this worth the end picture? You know, you're playing music for everybody. Fuck yeah. Superman! Yeah! Give me another beer. Fucking driving this stupid ass fucking bus. All day. It's been a goddamn struggle. We had to grab all the last shit of our van today. So I brought my books. Phil Jackson. Last season. Yeah. Don't worry, make money. This fucking sucks. We're down three grand now. No, we're not saying goodbye yet. I don't like saying goodbye. You guys want to say goodbye? We'll see you later. Clean up all of those diseases you have in there, Benny. Come back to us. It's like an intervention. Come back, Benny. I knew we were fucked then, because we had still had seven hours to go until we had to get to our show in like Salt Lake City. Back in the van. Back in the van. The show must go on. And we got a van to drive us to Colorado. Then I had to borrow a fucking Prius. We still had to make the gig. It was like a lot of money and we were broke. And so we had to go. So our friend was nice enough to let us pull a trailer on our fucking Prius. We made it to the gig. My fans are the best. Fro heads for life. And don't you worry. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. First time I saw Andy Frasco, he had booked a show here, and I walked in to the room, and he's sitting at this piano, and there's got to be, and he's in high school, you know, um, in Calabasas, but he was 80 kids, and he's got them mesmerized, and I'm, I'm like, who is this guy? Give him all your energy, baby. 
My name is Phil St. Germain, and I am the owner of Guitar Merchant, and uh, we've been open, started the business in 1999. We've been here for, uh, for eight years, and the vision of Guitar Merchant was to have a place where you could uh, get a guitar, learn to play it, and have a stage to play on. So the vision was the experience for um, musicians of all, of all levels, and uh, it works. We teach over 100 students a week, and uh, the venue, which we're in right now, is opposed to a lot of different kinds of music. We do an open mic Wednesday. A lot of these guys, when they get out of school, they make a decision. They go, okay, am I going to, was that just a passion, or am I going to go and continue this? And Andy decided strongly that's what he wanted to do. It's, it's really hard, it's a struggle, you know, it really is a struggle out there trying to find food and get gas, sleeping on couches, you know, all we're doing is just playing music, you know, trying to live the dream. A lot of people have been helping us, like, we have so many, so many grateful fans that we really appreciate all over the country, and now all over the world, we're starting to travel. He's so good at capturing the moment. Like, you know, he's a, he looks you straight in the eye and he's like, let's fucking do this, you know? And you're just like, fuck yeah, let's fucking do this. <laughs> and he does that to the whole audience. So he does it to the band that's on stage and he does it to the whole audience and that's what makes Andy a great entertainer. When you have that ability, that's it, you know? That's the ability to get everybody around you to forget all their bullshit and just do their thing, you know, and that's, that's the magic. And that's, that's what Andy Frasco had. I called your mama, I called your daddy, I called your sister and your baby nanny. They're all coming for your baby. But that's just how it goes. You got somewhere to go. Well, what do I got to do, yeah, to make you love me? Do yeah. going great these last couple shows have been awesome the buzz is out you know the people are listening to the music and the music is speaking for itself and Frasco's energy I'm really excited to get out there and you know play for all our peoples play for all our fans and family and you know people that believe in us and you know we're definitely gonna push it as hard as we can this year I'm really looking forward to it
<laughs> yeah, buddy. Rockstar Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we play a couple more? How y'all feeling? Uh, yeah. 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 Something with energy. Energy. <laughs> <laughs> Double time. Cream. Twenties. Here, yeah, boys. <laughs> I wish it was hundreds. Cream. Twenties. There you go. Dollar, like drug dealers. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Top here. Take that, Billy. Well, we're at Swing House in Santa Monica. We're day before we hit the studio, so we're making sure we all know our shit <laughs> so we don't fuck up, because the studio is really expensive and we can't fuck up. But these guys are pros, so we're all good. What's going on? My name is Andy Frasco. I'm uh, 26. I'm a songwriter from Los Angeles, California. I'm playing in every fucking town that will let me play. <laughs> Hell, we'll probably be in your town soon, I guess. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ernie Chang. I play the saxophone for the Andy Frasco band. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> My name's Danny Avila. I'm from Montclair, California, and I play guitar. Shred. <laughs> My name's Chris Lager. I play guitar mostly and write songs and sing. And um, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. My name is Andy Avila, also known as Andy Beats. I'm from Montclair, California, and I play the drums. My name is Sean Eccles, and I play guitar and sing with Andy Frasco. You win. I'm Jeremiah Weir, and I play organ for Andy Frasco Band and Chris Lager Band, uh, organ and electric keyboards, stuff like that. My name is Charles Gooden. I'm the producer for Andy Frasco and the UN. I'm Brandon Miller. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and I play bass. My name is John Fairchild, and I play the drums, and I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Steven Superman Castillo. Everybody mostly calls me Superman, though. And uh, I slap the bass in the band. So our fans have been asking us to play their weddings. We did this one uh, for some friends in Los Angeles, and. In, and they flew us out to Key Largo, Florida. And I didn't know Florida. It was crazy. I mean, it was so fun. And you know, it's like they're telling us about, oh, there's this Grammy Award winning producer who's gonna play piano uh, while we walk the aisle. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, it could be like some Barbara Streisand producer or something. But then it was Charles. And then, like, one by one. Yeah. Guys start coming in. Yeah. Okay. Charles has been incredible. Charles Good in producing the album, getting uh, you know Andy to try new chord progressions or you know structuring the songs differently or trying new things. I think has been uh, you know good good growth for Andy and the band too to have a Grammy Award winner. You know really feeding into hey why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? What if we did this and push new directions a little bit, try new things and, you know, experiment and, you know, just continue to grow the sound. First day of work um, was for the Dust Brothers as a staff producer and uh, I was an engineer on Mbop the very first day. He did Santana Supernatural, Morphine. Like, oh my God. Like, boys, don't fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
So we play, and then he's just in the front, just rocking out, and I didn't even say anything. I'm like, oh my God, this is it, guys. And they were incredible, the whole band. And uh, got all the old people dancing first, which was really cool, and then everybody. I'm crowd surfing his nephews or something, you know, doing some crazy stuff on the beach. <laughs> and uh, I come back and he's like, dude, I like your music and I want to produce your album. I'm like, you know, it's like life will throw you this opportunity. And it's either there, you got to pick yes or no. If you think about it, then you'll overthink it and then it's gone. So I just said, fuck it, let's do this. I was teaching at a guitar store, um, a place called Guitar Merchant. And that place was very close to where Andy lives, and then he comes back from the tour. I think it was only his first year. He came in, and the owner of the place, uh, Phil, um, introduced us, and he was saying, oh, this is Ernie. He's a saxophone teacher here, and so on and so forth. He was in here one day, and he got a, uh, experimenting with a loop pedal. But Ernie Chang, at the time, he's doing like a sax lesson, and he walks out and he goes, He's like, I play saxophone. I'm like, oh, really? You want to come sit in with us tomorrow? Like, yeah, yeah, sure. And this is how crazy of a guy Ernie is. He brings a sax, he starts playing in the crowd. You know, he's really like soft spoken. But when he comes to sax, he's just a monster. So I'm like, Ernie, um, you want to go on the road with me? I leave uh, tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, I'll quit my job. I'll go. All right, why not? And it was summertime. I didn't have anything else to do but teach and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, sure, why not? And that was seven years ago. <laughs> Match made in heaven. He's the most loyal man I've ever met in my life. But we're not making money, you know? We might have got a record deal. We might got a new van, new accessories, but we're not making money that will change a life. So they're, they're believing in me, you know? And that's why I love these guys. My first tour I ever did in my life was with Andy Fasco. It's still all pretty new to me. I'm not jaded yet or used to it, but um, I'm kind of made to be a rock and roller. It's been my life's work, basically. But it's fun. It's, dope it's everything it should be. Superman's been wearing the same fucking cape every day, all day. It's dirty. But what the fuck? He needs to rock. Look at him. Hey, Sam, what's up? I got a name down. My name is Superman. Superman. What's a shame and what's a shame? I want to go in the desert, dude. Go in the desert, Sue. Go. Is it warm? Does it feel like the desert? So uh, I've been doing this now for seven years. You know, I do 250 shows a year, 40 states, 65 cities. We go to Europe and Asia now. You know, I think I finally have a formula how to do this independently. You know, it's like if you don't have money, you know, to hire an agent or you don't have anyone that believes in you yet, like a manager or whatever. You know. Hey, John, it's Drew. Uh, Andy Frasco is representing you. I just started cold calling a thousand venues when I first started, you know, it's like, you need to get out there. You need to play in every town. You need to make an impression in every town until it comes along, you know, it's like anything. Welcome to Cribs. My Victorian layer right here. We are not smoking weed in the fucking observatory. It's good. It'd be so organic. We're about to Do it. You know, whatever your passion, whatever your little, you know, compass, whatever you were born with, to do it, it comes down to that's the best way you are of service to the planet. To do what you love the best is helping the planet the best. And the only time you lose in life is when you give up. If you don't give up, you make it.
donut. Oh shit. <laughs> I almost caught me slipping, dog. <laughs> we donut we You believe in something? You believe in you the change you want to see in this world? Do it. You know? Even if no one believed in you at first, you know? You know, all my friends were growing up in high school and middle school were like, oh, you ain't, you can't sing. You should might as well just manage bands or do something with money. You're good with money. I'm like, fuck you. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I want to play music, and I want to sing, and I'm going to prove all you wrong. <laughs> So I called a thousand venues. I got 200 shows, you know. Then from there, no one would show up. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe I should hire some musicians in the local towns and have them just sit in so they bring their friends. And slowly, I would have these musicians sit in, and then they'll bring their 10 or 20 friends. Then they'll see the show, and then more people will show up, and I'll just keep on bringing these musicians. And then the ones that I like, I'll just take them on the road with me. Just Sean and Danny playing that. The main, the main group. Okay. So, so There's a lot of bands are like, you know, bread. They're just bread. Well, Andy Frasco is like a whole sandwich. It's flavors, it's combinations. Different musicians all the time. He keeps you guessing. You never know what's going to come next. Who's going to pop up on stage, you know? Yeah, and it's an experience. drop off the planet, you want to slowly keep your career around, like the Dave Matthews, the Radioheads, you know? All these grassroots bands who didn't feel like they wanted to do the mainstream thing. And they said, fuck it, I know what our fan base likes, I'm just gonna give them what I want. And I think that's the new way of how things are working these days, especially with these real shitty 360 deals these labels are giving out and and these venture capitalists, you know, it's such a risk to invest in an art. So they're gonna give you a 60% interest rate. It's like, how do you uh, make money off that? How do you make art that's worth it when you're worrying about, oh, I gotta make this art to make money. I'm like, no, you gotta make art that means something. Well, I could just stare at you I think in music, you gotta have the quality of music and the 
be able to perform, hook a crowd. You also have to have the business and the promotion side, and he's got both. If you follow your passion and dreams, it becomes a platform for others to do the same. Good way to have this tour. And the weather's perfect. I think we'll have a good crowd in there. I'm stoked. I love Michigan, man. This is starting to become one of the top five states. Last chance dance, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure entertaining y'all. Come on, everyone up. This is the last song. Let's do this, people. One, two, one, two, three, four. I've met so many different musicians through Andy Frasco, Sean Eccles, Corn Montgomery, you know, all those guys with Groovement, and it's really cool, man, just meeting all these different musicians all over the country. We're like a real UM, you know, like a real family that's worldwide, you know, that we can all get together and speak this language. People, when they hear it, they're, they're uplifted and it really opens up their spirit. And what we do on stage and what Frasco does and what we all do, the whole chemistry behind it, it's a real pull and push thing. So it just, it's a great show. Well, Andy Frasco and the UN is a revolving cast of musicians besides Ernie Chang. The reason why I love music so much is because it's endless. You don't, you have no idea where you're gonna end up with. You could do one thing another day and be a completely different thing the uh, next. So it's always something great to see and great to hear. You just never know what the day will bring. Hey! Oh! Those guys are going out there and they're conquering the world one gig at a time. And a lot of times Ernie is his secret weapon because the crowd might not be into it at the beginning. He's at a new club, not played before. Ernie, get out there and dry hump every one of these people with your saxophone. Ernie jumps right on it. Yeah, the real important thing about, about making the album is like the magical process of pre-production. You know, being in this small room, not worried about the studio costs or, you know, you're, you're, you're in this small room to create, you know, and it's so important, you know, and you know, you might feel like the song should go one way, but to have another ear in there that says, oh, I think it should go this way. I mean, that's important to do different things instead of just being stuck doing the same thing. You know, that, you know, like a robot. Like, oh, this works, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna play disco beat. I'm gonna play shuffle, because that works. And I was like, he's like, no. I get that works, but let's see what works differently. Let's see another thing that works. You could have another thing to throw at them. So that's what helped me out a lot with Charles. Charlie played, like, right here. Wow. We're at East West Studios in Hollywood. And this place has history out the wazoo. I and mean, Charles told us that he engineered uh, Bridges to Babylon by the Stones in the same room. He's like, that's where Charlie Watts was. That's where Keith, <laughs> that gets me going <laughs> big time. And beyond that, there's so much history in here, and it's a nice studio. It's going to sound great. And, you know, the vibe is here, so I think we'll, it's going to be good. We're going to make magic. Um, 
Um, where's the drummer? <laughs> oh, we're right now the drummer. <laughs> yeah. That's classic. classic. Who's, who's, who's yeah. drumming? Andy. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. All right, you got a lot of cables. I met him through uh, just another one of his old drummers. It was uh, one of my uncle's students, and uh, he needed a guitar player, so he called Danny to come and do this video shoot. Danny went down to the video shoot, did a couple of little tours with Frasco here and there, told Frasco about me and brought me on. I did the Joe Walsh show with Frasco. And then we, me and my brother told him about Superman, and then, you know, we brought Superman on, and he's had us ever since. So it's been good, man. It's been good. Lots of tours. Well, we got our workout for the day. Charles. So we got, you know, Andy Avila on the drums. I've had seven drummers in the past. This is the longest guy that I've ever had as a drummer in my band. And he sings. He's got that gospel feel. He's awesome. Cool dude. A little ego trip, but <laughs> all drummers are ego trips, you know. But that's why we love each other, because I'm so egoed out, too. So. Let's hear it before you take it off. Okay, well, only because it looks like this. Oh. Which is, might as well just take it off anyways, because I put one on there and it didn't have a hole yesterday, yeah. and I was kind of fucking around. Today, we're going to do this recording. A lot of preparation, a lot of hard work. Stop talking about it. Start being about it. We're artists, we just go through the yeah, yeah, yeah. checking. There's an artist transport. Awesome. Yeah, that's where those guys are gonna be picked up. It's Walker Russo, 2014, yeah. Mulberry hey. Mountain. You know, Andy Frasco, New York. Give it up for these boys, y'all. What you thinking, Bernie Miller? High kick, high kick, high. Live music is so important for people, you know? And to see, you know, a crowd face to face or have the crowd see a musician and see what he actually does and not just what he does in a studio by himself, what he actually does with a group of people and how he can move them is why people listen to music and why they've been listening to music for thousands and thousands of years. It's that. It's that connection between musician and listener. And that's what a music festival brings. You can finally put a face to it instead of YouTubing it, you know? It's awesome. One of my favorite things we did too is we played with Chris Lager Band at the Mother's Brewing Tent, which was just so ghetto, thrown together standing on their beer tables, almost breaking them, you know? And it's like just people standing around in a circle pretty much watching us play, and it was a blast. It was so cool. Oh, my goodness. Like Brandon said before, like, this guy has got something special. Like, he is a powerful front man. I played with a lot of really, really kick-ass musicians like Mato Nanji and Tab Benoit, Chris Lager, and, you know, Magic Slam, and all these wonderful band leaders, songwriters, musicians. Nobody does what Andy Frasco does. And I don't know how he gets that energy every night, but God bless him for doing it. I have never seen anybody crowd surf while I'm on stage. He does it every single night. He doesn't like to take shots. He says, pass the bottle to the chicken man, 60 rows back, and then pass me to the chicken man. <laughs> who does that type of stuff? Andy Frasco, that's who does that. Thank y'all so much for coming out celebrating live with us tonight. Give it up for all our friends. Give it up for Andy Frasco. Give it up for Mother. It's so fun. And I always loved, you know, like I said, I started booking him for our concert series for the festival I throw. And one day, accidentally, it worked out where his band couldn't make it. And he was like, hey, guys, I need somebody to play. And we just got up and played with them. And it's really fun to work with somebody that is that 
entertaining and confident and just able, like I said, to work crowds into the craziest frenzy you've ever seen. I've never seen anything like it. Now we're in the studio recording a, a full-length album at East West Studios where they did Beach Boys Pet Sounds, where they did um, everybody, Rolling Stones, the whole nine. And then here's us, a little gypsy band in this million dollar studio I'm like oh my god I'm like don't fuck up Andy don't fuck up because there's a lot of money on the hands and he believes in us and this is your shot you know so you got to give it all you can so I flew out everyone all the best guys that I had and said we got to make an awesome record for this guy and I think it's turning out great we're just uh we muted it for a second we're just uh, banging on the board here you guys ready we started loading in like about 9 a.m. And yeah, we started plugging shit in, getting all the lines checked, all everything all isolated sound wise. And Charles is standing there. He's just, it just, he just knows it's going to be a great time. And you know, this record that it's going to be a great live record. It's going to be a party. It's going to be awesome. All right. Yeah, um, simple. Just, yeah keep it simple and just like. Less these. Yeah, no, that's fine. All that stuff's fine. Think about, um, because this is a, like a lot of eighth notes kind yeah. of a song. So, so like, play the rest. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, like, Miles used to say, like, well, it's the space yeah, between the notes yeah. that you're really playing. Oh, yeah. So just think about that. It's, it's, and have it bounce, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So, I mean, that's How's great. The and it's the groove is amazing. Cool. Yeah, and it sounds really good um, just having you focus on the piano yeah, and not totally. have to sing. And exactly. like, and so um, I think it's a good model for, for doing these. Let's do this shit. Right on. We'll nail these out. All right, guys, let's do like two more and, and move on. Can you guys all tune? We'll nail those. There's two of them. One, two. Two real big. Yeah. One, two, three, pop. My family's pretty, pretty tight. Um, we, we always crack jokes at each other, but you know, it's always like, hey, you know, what are you doing now? I, I know you're doing this band thing, you know, you've been doing it for a while, you're making money, you know, you, you're supporting yourself. Yeah, are you doing? Are you doing all right? You know, he's like, you, you know, all these type of things. And then they try to, I try to explain to them sometimes. You know, I'm a touring musician. I go on the road. I'm always gone. I'm playing music, doing what I love to do. And you know, sometimes with the, in the Asian mentality, it's like, oh, you're not a doctor. You're not a lawyer. You're not a, you know, you know, an accountant. It's like weird to them. Until, until they actually see one of the shows, then they're just like, oh, okay, that's what you do. Right? Yeah, he's, he's fine. He's good. So yeah, my dad, my aunt, my sister, my cousins, they have all seen me play already, so they don't really ask me much anymore. They kind of just, you know, just be like, all right, you do your thing. <laughs> we'll see you at like Thanksgiving or Christmas. <laughs> Sipping his wine suit and tie while I'm here 
Yeah, the new songs are great. It's got bigger swing, more upbeat, more funk, more soul, more of a party, you know. Frasco has evolved so much over the past years, and it's great to see him, you know, evolve this way to where he wants to, you know, broaden, broaden his horizons and, and open up more sounds and more soul to his music. So, Charles really did that, though. He fucking killed this shit. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. So I wore this like tie-dye outfit Brandon picked out with like a tie-dye vest. <laughs> we look fucking ridiculous. <laughs> For the show, it was awesome. These pants are tight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that this is what I wanted to do for the longest time, but now that I get to do it, it's the best thing in the world. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Let's do this. Are you ready? Approved of these messages. I think you ready. We out here trying to fix our bus. We out here in the street here right now, you know, rapping. My name is Jaron Taylor. I'm Andy Frasco's tour manager. I'm uh, responsible for driving, selling merch, uh, you know, loading in, loading out, and just helping the guys out where I can. What would I do without you? I met Andy at uh, the gig that I used to work at, and. Uh, Moscow, Idaho, John's Alley, and uh, shout out to John's Alley, by the way. <laughs> but um, I met him when he came through about three years ago. We just became friends, and then uh, he asked me to join 
join the team and help them out on the road. So. What would I do without you? Word of mouth through these social networks. It's like, oh, Frasco show is fucking crazy. You know, he crowd surfed to a Jaeger bomb or something, you know? And all that stuff is good promotion, you know? And you got to build little moments in everyone's mind about your brand. And if you don't have the money to push it down their throats, like Pepsi, like Atlantic or, you know, then you got to... You gotta create memories. And you know, new age marketing is like little memories that make people remember who you are, you know? And if you could build a lot of little memories throughout your career, they'll stick with you. And that's the most important thing, you know? You're trying to build timeless music. I've always been in more high energy bands, but nothing like how he's jumping off the walls and going crazy. And he demands it, of, like, he wants every single person in the room to get it, you know? And I've seen it happen almost 95% of the time. Even if there's 10 people in the room, they, he gets them going. You know, it's, it's awesome, it's cool to be a part of. Well, I wrote tempos down at rehearsal, and we changed a couple of keys on them. Um, and then we've just been playing to a click to get a guide vocal, and then redoing all the instruments to that guide vocal. And I've been doing three takes each, and it's all those guys are so tight and so well rehearsed that that's all we need. I've only played with a handful of other guitar players, like two guitar player bands, and like we really were working out the two guitar things. We're playing parts that work together instead of you know fighting for like ego shit. Which sometimes, which I've been in that situation where it's like me, 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 me. And it's got to let it breathe, you know. And two guitars can work. It's like the Stones kind of thing, where you know somebody's playing the meaty part, you're kind of playing like more sparsely and kind of color and things like that. And we're getting into that with this recording too, which is cool. In a band setting, it's all about collaboration, and that's what this is. Charles House, uh, the producer. We're trying to finish this album and try to get it done before we leave on tour tomorrow. Shit. I think. Come on.
have substance in what you're saying. You gotta believe in it. You know, you gotta express it with passion, you know? Let people know that you truly mean this. If you just do it, you know, you see these bands who just, you know, these famous bands who don't give a shit anymore, they're just not even playing and they're just boring. What's the point of doing art if you can't have heart? That's how you're gonna build memories, you know? Very the very opening line. Yeah, just punch that up. or something. Yeah, just punch it's that up. You, you go down. Three of my lovers are married. Three of my lovers are married. It's like a crooner, like Tom Waits shit. Three of my lovers are married. Let me do that. I used to play the um, commercial jingles and cartoon themes at age two by ear. And my mom put me in formal lessons at four. And so I've studied every, all through, and I'm a music major at Stanford. We're about to introduce the Flaming Lips. Does that look all right? This is ridiculous. Ridiculously amazing. Uh -huh. So we did Flaming Lips. I got to introduce Flaming Lips with my buddy Brandon from the Chris Lager band. And the Flaming Lips are cool. They invented, you know, party rock. You know, there's crazy confetti blowing at their shows. And like, that's like be a perfect band for us to open for. You know, that's, so I felt like I had to give him the right, the right love. So I was like, girls, Stop Instagramming your LED angel wings. And boys, stop dipping your pinky in that little bag of Molly and give it up for the five and laps. And he got, you know, it was, the crowd freaked out. It was awesome. And then Wayne Coyne, the lead singer, ran up to me when I got backstage, like, hey man, you gotta do it again. We weren't ready. So I had to run back up there. I can't hear you. <laughs> I pumping up the crowd. Give it up for the motherfucking flaming lips! And the crowd went nuts, and then he brings out these uh, balloons that say, fuck yeah, Wakarusa. I'm like, this guy is my dude right there. He's my dude. I gotta, I gotta hang out with this guy more. <laughs> that was a great experience. Yeah. Let's do Don't You Worry. We need drums on that. If you're just doing a scratch with the accuse. I think music um, is very essential to life and to evolve in, as a species. Um, you know, the arts defines a culture, it defines its people, and I feel like life imitates art. I really do. I think artists are visionaries, you know, they're, they see things, they, they create things, they make things happen. They, Artists change the world and then give, I think, everybody else a, a basic concept of what it is to be human, you know? <laughs> Seven. Hang with Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Music is a gift, and I believe it's a gift to all humans, and I just happen to be one of the fortunate ones who has reached out and tried to tap in to those sounds and bring them down and express them through my instruments, the electric keyboards generally. Ooh. 
it is my life. It is all I really know. It's all I've spent my youth doing. Like through all my 20s and now through half of my 30s, all I've done is played music with mainly these guys, mainly on the road, you know? Come hell or high water, whether you're lonely or surrounded by a whole bunch of people, we always tap into that music. I kind of have a little cold. I got some sniffles from Andy Frasco. Every time I'm on stage, it goes away. Every time you feel pain and you're on stage with your boys and the bass starts kicking and the drums kick in and I hit that high holy, no pain. So music is a blessing in many ways to different people, but to me, it's something extra special because it's how I've dedicated myself, what I've dedicated myself to. Okay. You want what? Just get ready. Oh. Shit. You hear the click? Yeah. Everybody's good. You hear that? You need headphones. Hey, yo. Oh. You gonna be in here with us, Andy? Stand. I'll be right there in that room. Yeah, I went to the Andy Frasco show. They were like, who's this Andy Frasco guy? I keep hearing about this guy's most amazing show to go see. I better go check it out. I'm going with you. Can I go with you? Yes, you better. You haven't been yet? What? Let's go to Andy Frasco in the U and change your life. Oh, my goodness. How long are you going to make that verse? And you want to do hits on the verse like that? Here we are on the Sunset Strip. You know, it's awesome. We're recording in the same room as... Uh, Mamas and the Papas recorded California Dreamin' and, and um, Beach Boys, that sounds, you know, so. It's pretty cool, pretty cool, I ain't gonna lie. I'm having a blast, I'm having a blast. Don't you worry. The, the tolls of the living on the road, you know? You gotta, you gotta really pay attention to those things, you know? It's very, very vital to, you know, make sure that everything gets, you know, taken care of properly, but. But then that thing died horribly in the middle of fucking nowhere. All I could do was roll joints. I, I can't, like, this is not helping you. Smoking back. You're fucked. Because we drove like ten thousand miles in an old bus. We're ninety miles outside of Cheyenne, Wyoming. 15 hours deep into our overnight drive. I'm gonna close this door, yo. This 30-foot piece of shit bus that we had. Thought it'd be cool to live the rock star life. But uh, I uh, couldn't afford the rock star life, so I had to buy a 1980 big-ass bus. And it blew up on us and somewhere in like Nebraska. And now we're stuck. We're stuck, uh, we don't know what to do. <laughs> we only had it for a month. And uh, we only drove it like 8,000 miles. I'm drinking because we can't drive. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Oh, cheers. 20 grand down the drain, boys. 20 grand. Fuck. Got a little cum up there. Just 20 more. <laughs> Throwing myself on the road for six years really taught me that if you want to write a good story, you got to live it. 
you got to know what you're writing about. It's like, don't fake it. Experience life. I mean, look at this awesome world we live in. Look at all the crazy shit you could do. Live it. You are the passenger in your journey. And you get to pick whatever journey you want, you know? You might as well live it. You might as well experience it. I mean, what's the point of just sitting and going on Facebook and watching everyone else's experience? Why don't you make your own experience and have other people like it, you know? <laughs> yeah. We're at border hopping right now. Drink your beers. Being illegally towed. Shaking ain't no crime. Ain't no crime or ain't no crime? No. Shaking ain't no crime. No, you're doing double negative. That's shake it ain't a crime. Shake it ain't a crime. Let's try that out now. Let's try it. Now turn it around. Around. Shake it ain't no crime. Ain't, ain't no crime. It ain't no crime. Shake it all the time. Shake it all the time. Cause shake it ain't no crime. Shake it, shake it all the time. Cause shake it ain't no crime. Over a spurious spot. Look yeah. how we worked that out. Yeah. It's close. But what I'm missing is the sexy. It's a little bit too aggressive. And I want it more like, how would Marvin Gaye sing it? Or how would Luther Vandross sing it? Or like, even Otis Redding, like. Not deeper voice, just add to. There we go. Almost done. What's going on right now? Charles is checking to see if uh, the vocals are good enough. <laughs> we actually finished in three days. It's amazing. It's pretty fast. I think it's gonna be good. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. It's gonna be awesome. Frasco and all of your United Nations. You're part of them now. <laughs> You're part of them. <laughs> it was nice, man. It was nice while it lasted. It's all right. We only got two more shows and cramming in like sardines in this little last car. It's all good, though. As long as we make it home, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> we, clam we crammed eight people in this Prius. And I'm like, I'm in the trunk with Superman. And we're just like this. I'm like, 
how badly do you want this, Frasco? <laughs> how badly do you want this? <laughs> Are you sweating that much? It's hot, Beck. We just started the drive. <laughs> Super. I've been back here for 10 minutes. I've been looking at Fuck. City, Utah. The last day of the tour. I just can't wait to sleep. And then we finally got here at 9 30 and we're about to go on in 10 minutes. All, right. All the trials and tribulations, we finally fucking made it here. We made it! We made it. Yeah. We made it. Let's fucking blow their fucking lungs. Let's do it. Right. Cheers. 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 We already flicked the bean for you, bro. Cheers. So let's go. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. Ah. Get the ah. Let's do this. Ah. Let's go. Ah. Let's get the fuck out of here. I met all the boys at Wakarusa Festival because it's a four-day event, and I've been to plenty of festivals, and I understand how much it hurts to be at a festival for four days. So I went on Saturday. That first show, you know, the crowd was just, it kept piling in, piling in. By the end of it, the whole area, you couldn't see any dead space. It was just packed, like, going out the, the gates of the place. Are you ready for some Andy motherfucking Frasco? Yeah! Give it up for these motherfucking guys! Yes! Everyone, you know, loving it, just not caring about anything but, you know, enjoying themselves. Still love Cohen. Uh, I grew up with Andy, a good friend, and now I'm their tour manager. Been kind of touring with them for a little while and just helping them out. Yeah, the first show was a, it was a day show, and uh, we showed up, and there was a few people sitting out, like, waiting for us to show up. They had their blankets and shit. We're, like, setting up our gear, and before you know it, we play one song, and there's maybe a few hundred people, and then the second song, there was probably, like, 2,000 people there. And from what I heard, it was the biggest crowd that was at that stage that weekend, and we fucking brought it. That's for damn sure. We brought the heat. Once we started playing, it just kept filling up and filling up. And it was all the way to the back, just a sea of people, a couple thousand. And, uh, you know, there was a bunch of main stages and stuff, but it was so cool to play the backwoods stage. It was more intimate and, you know, it was just more energy driven. You were with our people and, you know, just really enjoying, you know, being a fan and also being a musician and helping out on that aspect with the rock and roll. Thank you for Twenty people on stage, all musicians, and the stage is going like this. And I'm looking around at Frasco, and he's looking back at me, and he's like, "Fuck!" And he, then he just jumps on this thing, and starts swinging, throws himself in the crowd. It was crazy. It was great. Good times. Five years from now, from coast to coast, everybody will know about Andy Frasco. And by then, I mean, just think about you see how his shows are now. Think about what his show will be five years from now. I mean, we're talking production, lasers, pew, pew, pew. dancers, fire twirlers. All jamming, soloing, having a blast, just rocking out. Oh my God, I had the Kakuza boys from Spoon Fed Tribe on top of the speakers, just, just <laughs> going crazy. And, that moment, I was like, we are building an experience. People look forward to our shows for the party. 
If we could bring a party like that every big show, we're gonna get there. I know it, I feel it. It was crazy. Macaruso was insane. Good workout music. So many musicians just on the same level, just going crazy, you know. We were just a bunch of like wild animals, a bunch of wild monkeys just running around doing some random stuff, but it ended up sounding good and everybody had a good time, so. It's like, it was like a porch. It's called the Backwood Stage. And it's like the back of someone's house. And it kind of like folds out, looks like a house. And there's a, it folds out, there's a stage on there. And you look like you're, someone's playing in a house, but they just cut it in half and made a stage out of it. It's crazy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. <laughs> All you have hired, what? And we were just all bumping into each other and just rocking out and, you know, sharing the stage, sharing the energy. It was really a good moment to be there with all my friends and, you know, that they believe in the same thing that I believe in. And, you know, it's so awesome to be rocking with them. And, yeah, that was my favorite part, Wakarusa. Because he's that kind of guy. He's always going to push himself to outdo himself year after year. Yeah, it's been a crazy year, you know. I got funding to start a record label. I put out an album. I played festivals this summer that are 25,000 plus festivals. I emceed some of my favorite bands. I was showcasing for major labels. And I realized I'm almost there. And I finally see the light. Let's show all those corporate fucking people whose mouth in this really is, Walker Russo. Are you ready? Are you ready? That festival really changed my life because it was an amazing experience to see so many people out there believing in me. And I thought, you know, is the party over? No, I don't think so. After seeing that, I think it only just begun, actually. So, I'm looking forward to the next chapter. Just because this is our fucking mountain, watch out!
gets out of bed. I want to put you on an airplane, put your friends over Want you by my side? See, I'll make you happy. Let you do what you do. There ain't no map where we're going, so we got nothing to lose. Clock!